Hello my soccer universe. Here are all the winners of Nations League match day 4. A match day that actually gave us quite some exciting games. Oddly enough though, if we look at the standings, there are only two groups where actually some standings have flip-flopped, but there was really a lot of stuff to talk about. What stood out for me? Well, first off, Austria winning big against Norway, but I already made a video about that one, so we're not going to talk a whole lot about this one in this video. So I actually want to point out the young and wild Germans that got a fully deserved only 1-0 win over the Netherlands. This should have been 3 or 4, given that they have sent off the legends ahead of the game. The performance then with a young squad with players that you don't really hear a lot about. That was really impressive. And I think the winning spirit is getting back to Germany after a good performance at their home Euros. Watch out for that one. It reminds me a teeny bit of what happened in 2006. Germany were also on the bottom then. And then a good performance at that World Cup. Leave to Germany and they got eventually a World Cup trophy. And I can see something happening like that as well again. Because let's face it, there is enough talent. And I guess the Netherlands, a Musiala didn't even play. If you can get Musiala and Wirtz working together well, watch out world. This could be a really exciting team. And it was a really good performance. And Germany were also the first team in League A to qualify for the new quarterfinals. Spain then followed with another impressive performance. And yes, at this moment, it's still Spain, 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 Spain. If France could get it together, they probably would be in that conversation as well. And yes, speaking of France, this is the other thing that really stood out to me. What does Belgium have to do to beat a France that is completely out of sorts? Yes, dangerous players up front, but you were so much better. You just cannot buy a win three games this year against France and none of them you could win. And in the last one, you definitely should have won. Is there another team that should be in contention? Well, this is the news that hit on Tuesday evening, although it has been rumored before. The news is as follows. Multiple news outlets are reporting it unanimously, so might as well get in on the action. Thomas Tuchel will be the new England manager. What a bombshell in a way. It's again a foreigner after Sven Jöran Eriksson and Fabio Capello is taking over for the first time. A coach from a country that is a traditional rival to England is actually taking over. So that for me is the spicy part. If I look at it, yes, Thomas Tuchel might actually be a really good coach for this team because he has all the tactical acumen, but will he have the time? Maybe England need to qualify. If he can work his magic at a big tournament, I think this could work very well for England, especially with all the stars that they have. It also means that Thomas Tuchel will not be able to complain that the FA is not buying him the players that he needs. Although, you know, you can hand out passes, I would guess. Also notable of all the revolutionary modern German coaches, arguably only Hansi Flick is working at a club. All the others are either retired, Löw, work for a national team or for Red Bull. And I gotta say, it makes also sense for Thomas Tuchel because he loved living in London. He was heartbroken. So I think going back to England works well. He's very well entrenched in the Premier League. Of course, we would like to see an English manager for the England team. However, how many great English managers are there? I mean, Graham Potter and Eddie Howe. Yes, I would have loved to see them heading the England national team. But I think Thomas Tuchel has way more clout. Now, the caveat is that no manager from a foreign nation has won a World Cup and also true for the Euros except for one, Otto Rehagel. So hold your horses. Also shout out to Northern Macedonia with a big win in Armenia. They actually are qualified for League B. We have still the duel between those two here on the side to also qualify for League B. Let's go to League B. Albania got a huge win in Georgia, which means that this group is wide open. The Czechs now probably looking the best to qualify as they are point ahead of the rest. But for me, every match in this group counts. And we also have a very tight group B3 with Austria in there, where Austria dominates not on goal difference, have the head to head against Norway. Still a lot to play for. And in League D, we almost got decision, but now all of them are also wide open. But let's review all the action league by league. Two Soboschlag goals give Hungary a 2-0 win in Bosnia and that also means that they stay in contention for a quarterfinal spot in the Nations League, 
because Germany beat the Dutch at home 1-0 now the Dutch are level with Hungary it was the big send-off for some of the German legends Naya, Gundogan, Müller and of course Toni Kroos but this was a new Germany they completely overwhelmed the Dutch for at least 60 minutes only led by a goal through leveling who had already a goal disallowed early on in the game the Dutch were not present yes late on Xavi Simons then hit the crossbar it was also Toni Malenschot but Germany should have won this by a much 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 higher scoreline and may I just add the Dutch playing in blue against Germany just doesn't look right I don't know what Belgium have to do to finally beat France Belgium were the better team should have taken the lead but Tillemans put his penalty over the bar and then Colomiani gives France the lead with a penalty Openda just before the half gets Belgium a very deserved equalizer and then again it is Colomiani gives France the go-ahead goal Germany is then sent off for a second yellow card that got Belgium very much back into the game but they cannot find the equalizer. It is mind-boggling how Belgium lost this game. Meanwhile, Italy get the expected 4-1 win against Israel with Retegi. Continuing his fine goal-scoring form, he scores the first one through penalty, a very emphatic one. And while Israel were dangerous for him there, this was all Italy. Di Lorenzo more or less settles the game. Abu Fani with a direct corner kick puts Israel back in contention. But then it's Fratesi and Di Lorenzo again who settle the game for Italy. Undoubtedly the best match of Tuesday evening happened in Warsaw where Poland and Croatia play out a crazy 3-3 draw. The goals came early, Zalewski opening and scoring in the fifth minute. However then, after a wonderfully one-timed Borna Sosa equalizer, Croatia turned around within eight minutes, Sucic and Batorina getting two more goals. However, crucially enough, Zalewski just before the half keeps Poland in play. And Poland then get the equalizer when Lewandowski sees Szymanski who takes a wonderful shot from the edge of the box. It's 3-3, then even Livakovic is sent off for coming out and hitting Lewandowski rather ugly on the knee. There were the chances for a Polish winner, but Croatia get a crucial draw that makes them now the favorites for the second quarterfinal spot out of Group A1. Much less exciting, but probably the same amount of spirit happened in Glasgow, where Scotland drew Portugal nil-nil the first points in a League A match. McTominay had an early header that could have given Scotland the lead. Then it was all Portugal. However, Portugal were either misfiring or there was a great Gordon save in the end. Scotland really earned that draw. Despite plenty of injured and otherwise missing players, Spain had a field day with Serbia, winning easily 3-0 in a game that was about as one-sided as you would imagine it to be. Laporte opening a scoring or in the fifth minute, Spain cannot double it up. Morata in the 54th even missed a penalty. However, then just 10 minutes later, he scores a beautiful 2-0 to make up for that miss. Palovic, another Milan player, is sent off in the 76th minute and from the free kick then Baena makes it three very impressive by the European champions. Meanwhile, an Ericsson equalizer to make it 2-2 between Switzerland and Denmark knocks Switzerland out of quarterfinal contention in a game that Switzerland largely dominated. Took twice the lead, one through Freiler, one through Amduni, a penalty. However, Isaksen and as I said, Ericsson equalized. Right after the equalizer, Switzerland scored a goal that was disallowed for a foul in the build-up. And so, yeah, Switzerland have to avoid now direct relegation to League B. If we look now at the standings in League A, well, the first two groups are more or less decided. The only things that are kind of still to play for are the quarterfinal spots with the Netherlands and Hungary. And in a way, the relegation picture is a little bit more interesting, you know, between Poland and Scotland, who will go down directly. Israel Pro is going down directly. Can Switzerland avoid it? But they have to win the head-to-head -head over Serbia, which is not easy having a two-goal deficit there. So you see, but overall, we know where League A is going. Going, it's more interesting of who will win League A. But currently, of course, Spain are favorites ahead of France, ahead of Germany and Portugal. I think those are the four big teams. Italy look like world beaters in Nations League action when it comes to big tournaments. Not so much, so watch out. But I think I actually like what Italy have been showing as of late. And so the upcoming League A matches, I mean, Belgium, Italy could be a big one. Uh, Italy probably can qualify. France will secure their spot with a win over Israel. I think it comes then down more to a Netherlands-Hungary matchup. That might be the most interesting one. But other than that, yeah, Denmark could win the group with a win over Spain. Outside chance.
In the early kickoff on Sunday, Kazakhstan gave Slovenia a little bit of a scare, hitting the crossbar in the first half and being dangerous on the counter-attack. However, Slovenia were definitely a better team. They get the win in the 55th minute through a beautiful drop kick by Jan Mlakar via the inside of the crossbar. Slovenia probably could have won it by a bigger scoreline, but a win they get after being chased out of the stadium in Oslo. Meanwhile, England, playing in their new beautiful away jerseys, get a bounce back win after the loss at home to Greece. 3-1 in Finland. However, it was never that straight forward. Grealish gave England a relatively early in the 80th minute. Finland had some good chances, should have really equalized, especially early in the second half. However, then it's an Alexander-Arnold free kick that beautifully goes into the net, settles the game, rise, makes it three. Peskinen then very late on pulls one back for Finland. But yeah, the three Lions are still in contention for promotion to League A. However, they're still trailing Greece by three points because the Greeks get another win. They are four out of four. Against Ireland, it was not as convincing, one has to say. Bakasetas getting the go-ahead goal in the 48th minute and then in stoppage of Mantalos adds another one. There were a couple of chances for Ireland in there as well. However, Greece overall the better team. In Linz, Austria got a decisive 5-1 win over Norway, meaning they have now the upper hand against Norway if it would come down to a head-to-head. -head. I was starting with a little bit nerves. Erling Haaland hitting the post early on, but then two minutes later, Marco Nato with a beautiful shot from the edge of the box by the inside of the bar into the net. Austria controlling the game, however, a little bit lax. It was a free kick then. The sort of headed in where Patrick Pence was a little bit too far on his goal and didn't go for the ball. Second half, the Austria turned on to get a penalty right off the kickoff. That Marco Nautovic slots home and then within 15 minutes, they decide the game with three headers against one of the tallest defenses in Europe. First off, it was Linhardt after a Romano Schmidt corner and then Savica gets two assists for Posh and then Gregoric. And at that point, Norway went into damage control. It was a big night. For Austria. Group B1 stays wide open. Leaders Georgia may have dominated the first half and had much the better chances in Albania. However, an Aslani shot early in the second half settles the game for Albania, who then actually could have won it even by a bigger scoreline. Quite a remarkable result. And then in the evening, the Czechs also seemed very much on top of Ukraine in Wroclaw. Cherv scoring his first goal for the Czechs and celebrating wildly in the 18th minute. There was a Vitek goal disallowed for offside. However, Dov big penalty gets Ukraine. Another a point in this group and now this group is wide open with the Czechs leading with seven points however Ukraine is last with four so all to play for in this one. On a wild night in Reykjavik, Turkey get their first ever win over Iceland in Iceland despite being a goal down in the first half and having a penalty denied due to a double touch by Chalanoglu. However, Kavici with a really nice shot gets it equalized and then it's another Chalanoglu penalty that re-establishes the lead for Turkey. However, this Iceland team never gives up. Good Jans in the 83rd minute gets an equalizer. You think that Iceland might be pushing, however then it's a goalkeeping error where Aktyo Koglu takes the ball off the goalie and Güler can pull it into the empty net and then Aktukoglu himself settles the game with another brilliant shot in the 95th minute. Meanwhile Wales stayed just behind Turkey with a 1-0 win over Montenegro thanks to Harry Wilson penalty. I've said already multiple times standings League B1, that's the big one. Everyone within three points. The Czech Republic now holding a slight advantage, but it is still very, very level. The matchup between Greece and England will be interesting. We also have Norway, Austria, Slovenia all on seven points. Norway only ahead because they have a few more games in the three head-to-heads than Austria and Slovenia. Turkey looks set now. Wales will need to win in Turkey. And so if we look at the upcoming matches, I mean Slovenia, Norway and Greece, England, those are two big ones already on the first day when we get back to Nations League action with also Turkey against Wales and Albania against Czech Republic. I mean, pretty huge matchups in League B. With a win in Armenia in front of a raucous crowd, North Macedonia all but secured their status as a League B nation, winning 2-0. The goals came relatively late through Miofsky, brilliant shot in the 72nd minute and also Alim in the 85th makes sure of the three points for Northern Macedonia. Meanwhile on the Ferry Islands, the Ferries completely dominated the first half, took a very deserved Sørensen lead in the 40th minute. However, Latvia made some changes, came out with a different spirit and get the equalizer through Sitz. It's end in a 1-0 
one one draw because the fairy Isles and late on miss another big chance the battle on top of group c1 continues however slovakia is being slightly put at a disadvantage losing out on goal difference they get a relatively hard fought win in azerbaijan a 3-1 taking the lead through an own goal by ramov then equalizes for azerbaijan and it's then a red card for emreli in the 70th minute that puts the game to slovakia harashlin with a nice shot in the 75th and duris in the 86th minute gets slovakia the three points however sweden outdo them with a 3-0 win in estonia with nanasi scoring his first two goals for sweden in the 29th and 37th minute and of course jokaris also gets on the score sheet it will all come down to the head-to-head -head in stockholm the kosovo secured themselves at least a playoff spot with another easy 3-0 win over cyprus winning the head-to-head -head and scoring some really nice goals along the way Rahmani opens the scoring, then Krasnici doubles it and Sahiti adds a third. Meanwhile, Romania continued a perfect run through that group. Although they found themselves down through a penalty, they equalized with a marine penalty and then a counter-attack initiated by Dragosin is played out to Man, who then finds Dragosin in the middle. And Romania have a second win over Lithuania. And wouldn't you know it, we had goals in Group C3. Belarus against Luxembourg finishes 1-1 with Belarus overall the better team. They even missed a penalty early on. Politevich gives them the goal Go ahead goal in the 54th minute however a late Rodriguez equalizer through a penalty selfish is a point for still winless Luxembourg and then unfortunately Bulgaria went under in Northern Ireland I gotta say of all the stadiums in Europe I hate Windsor Park the most because it's always ugly matches against a spirited crowd and the teams that I support rarely do well there be that aside, the game was really all Northern Ireland to the credit, with Price scoring a hat trick. The fourth goal, of course, being the pick of the bunch. Bulgaria's misery was definitely underlined when Despotov had the chance to make it 3 1 just before the half and he puts the penalty on the crossbar. And with this win, Northern Ireland, probably deservedly so, looked on set for direct qualification to League B. Also, not too many changes in the standings of League C except for Group C3, which is still very tight. Now we have also goals in this group. However, I think Northern Ireland look pretty strong. Bulgaria with this minus five in goal difference. Not so much. A lot will hinge on the upcoming matches. We already know that North Macedonia are through. And if you look at the upcoming matches, there's Sweden and Slovakia. This one will decide which of the two will go up unless there's a draw again and then will come down to a goal difference. So it's a must win for Slovakia. To be honest, Sweden can get out with a draw out of that one. And Northern Ireland, Belarus, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, you know, this group is wide open. So those are interesting matches. We also have Romania against Kosovo. Kosovo need to win against Romania. It will be a hard ask, to be honest. But then they have a chance to actually earn direct qualification to League B. But it looks more likely that Romania will do that. Moldova could have secured passage to League C with at least a draw on Malta. They had the better chances. However, in the end, it's Malta who win thanks to a Toma penalty. The 87th minute could have been even worse for Moldova because now at least they have the head to head over Malta. But Toma also missed and a penalty put it over on the cross bar deep in stoppage time. And over in Vaduz, Liechtenstein, the team with the longest losing streak at the moment, at least in Europe, kept Gibraltar at bay. It was not a great game. Gibraltar, though, having a little bit more of the game however then late on it's a penalty for Liechtenstein and Hasler steps up and sees his effort saved by the goalkeepers and so Gibraltar still in control of that group and in League D, Group D1, we have Gibraltar now ahead of San Marino and Liechtenstein. Moldova could have sealed the deal with getting a draw at Malta. That loss actually keep Malta very much alive. It will now be decided against Andorra. And so in these upcoming matches, we have already a big one between San Marino and Gibraltar. You know, San Marino get another win. If this would be a possibility, then they would look really good. Otherwise, Gibraltar can probably seal the deal already more or less with a draw. And then Andorra against Moldova with a win. Moldova are through because they own the head-to-head -head over Malta. If they only get a draw, then Malta can advance if they would win the last game against Andorra. So this is more or less the end of the international break. I'm not sure if we will have the time to do any roundup of South American qualification. Other stories, I may do that, but I cannot promise whether I will get to that. In any case, if you want to add something, please use the comments below. Let me know how your team did in the Nations League so far and of course in other competitions as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!